Having seen that there's no effect to any adjacencies when you change the auto reference value, we got a little prompt about, you know, hey, you should keep that consistent across all routers, but do we really have to do that? Let's take a look at router five right now and that gig ethernet interface, and we see that the cost is still one. So why did we do this if we end up with the same cost? Well, this is a reason why you want to put the auto cost reference bandwidth value command in on all of the routers in your network, because what we need is for that value to be the same across the board. So our interfaces will start reflecting a difference in their cost uh, according to their speed. So right now, just putting this command on router five really isn't enough to get that done. We need to at least go over to router one and enter the exact same command, because actually what we're really trying to do is raise router one's interface cost, right? We're trying to get that in line Fast Ethernet is one-tenth the speed of Gig Ethernet, therefore we'd like the OSPF cost on the Fast Ethernet to be one-tenth or at least lower uh, than that of the one we're looking at right now on the Gig interface. So let's head over to one. Well, the router OSPF1, we'll just tack in AutoRef1000. We get the exact same message. No adjacencies dropped, anything like that. They never will with this command. And let's do a fast ethernet look here. And look here, we got exactly what we thought we were gonna get, right? The cost of 10. So now, of course, that's coming from the fact that the reference bandwidth is 1000 meg. That's now divided by 100 meg, the speed of this fast ethernet port. And that's where we got 10 from. So mission accomplished? Question mark. <laughs> uh, we haven't put it quite across all of our routers yet, but do we have to? Actually, it would be a good idea because in resolving one issue of cost, we've created another one. Let's take an overall look here at exactly what we have right now. And the thing is, that's what we have right now. A gig ethernet interface on router five has a cost of one. It's exactly what we wanted because now the fast ethernet cost over on router one is 10. Well, the problem we created is that now that's the same as the cost on the Ethernet Zero interface on Router 3. So you see where I'm coming from and where Cisco's coming from by saying you really need to run this on all the routers in your network because now we have a fast Ethernet link and an Ethernet interface that, are, that have the same OSPF cost. And that does not reflect the difference in their speeds either. So let's go over to Router 3 and run the exact same command. Or not. Let's try three again. Don't get carried away with the zeros. Three is all we need. Once you get momentum, it's hard to stop. IP, OSPF interface, E0. And now you can see the cost has been raised to 100 because now we have our reference of 1000 meg. It's being divided by 10 meg. And what is 1000 divided by 10? It's 100. And that's exactly what we got. So again, it's a great demo here of why you want to use that auto cost reference bandwidth across all the routers in your network. Now, speaking off, uh, off the record, as I talk into a microphone here, speaking off the record, you will run into situations, especially if you work for a service provider, where occasionally you won't want to do the auto cost reference bandwidth across all routers in the network. Uh, you may just do them on your high-speed routers and then leave everything else alone. But as far as Cisco is concerned, you saw their recommendation. As far as keeping it consistent, I recommend the same. And you also saw what happened when we didn't do that with our Ethernet, Fast Ethernet, and Gig Ethernet ports. We resolved one issue but caused another one. But now by running the command on all three routers, then we have an Ethernet interface, a cost of 100 Fast Ethernet interface, which is 10 times as fast, has a cost of only 10. And then the Gig Ethernet interface, the fastest of all, has a cost of one. Whew. A lot of work there, one simple command, but you see the formula, you see why we wanted to do that across the board. And you're also probably thinking, you know, isn't there a way to do that, you know, on a per interface level? Actually, there is a couple of commands we could use on a per interface level. And the first one we're going to go ahead and demo right now, and that's simply IP OSPF cost. Because what I want to do, and we'll go over to one to do this. What I want to do is try this command at the interface level after I've used the auto reference command 
so I can see which one takes precedence over the other. So right now we've got router one at a cost of 10 on that fast ethernet interface. So let's go to that fast ethernet interface. And there's the cost option right there, interface cost. And you can set it from one to 65,535. This is also why that 0.1 that we came up with originally for the gig ethernet interface, uh, it can't be rounded down to zero because you literally can't put zero in here. So let's say that I was just going to go in manually and set it, and instead of setting it to 10, I was going to set it to 5. And we'll see if there are any options after that. No. So put it in there. No resets, nothing necessary, anything like that. So let's see which one takes precedence. And you can see it is the cost of 5. So whether you're using the default auto reference value or you change it, if you go to the interface level and use IP OSPF cost, that is always going to take precedence over the calculation using that value, whether you left it at the default or whether you changed it, this always takes precedence. So that would be a good way to go in. If you just got one interface you need to tweak in a network and you don't want to get into auto cost and the auto reference value, and you don't want to change it on all of your routers, then you could just go in and do it like this and get the job done. So that's two ways to do it. The third way to do it is using the bandwidth command. And that might sound a little bit strange, but you'll see exactly how we're going to do that at the beginning of the next video. I'm going to build another topology for us to work with. We'll look at some defaults and some non-defaults and use the bandwidth command to make sure we're getting the best routing possible. See you there.